Hey, y'all. Welcome to Vetted. I'm Patrick. Glad to have you. Thank you so much for joining us. So excited. I'm in a great mood today. It's Friday. Let's jump into the weekend. We got some great stuff for you today to cover. I got my co-host here. Where's he at? Oh, Rocket. That's my dog, Rocket. Say hello to him. Uh, you might see him running around. I got another dog, too, Mac. You'll see him just sort of running around in the background. Anyway, let's jump in. Ryan Graves. Um, let's take a look at this tweet right here. There was a little bit of controversy, not controversy, but confusion, let's say, over something he said at a, uh, an event yesterday that was hosted by The Hill online. It was live streamed, and during it, he was interviewed by one of the journalists uh, from News Nation um, who covered the David Grush story, and um, he said something that has got some people sort of confused, myself included. Uh, let's jump in and take a look at the clip and then we'll discuss uh the confusion all right here we go since the hearings um have you noticed um an uptick or a change in the in the reports that that you're receiving i've noticed from commercial pilots that there is absolutely an uptick uh some relatively new information i guess you could say is that i am hearing from uh cases that are more broadly dispersed so i have been reporting that north of the atlantic and in the north of the pacific as well Pilots that are doing those transatlantic or transpacific flights are seeing uh, various objects, lights that are coming down, uh, behaving in strange ways. Uh. So right there, the, these are the pilots. So stick around. Again, we're going to be covering one of these videos that today Ryan Graves released. OK, so stick around. Holding in a pattern. Um, look like almost like they're dogfighting in space in some way, kind of almost kind of back and forth with each other. I've reported that coming out near the... Okay, so there's the confusion, almost like they're dogfighting in space, right? Um, this is what sort of got confused, right? So someone like Tiny Klaus, right, gets 1,800 likes, and there was more people that tweeted it. He writes, Ryan Graves says that pilots on routes crossing the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans have recently been reporting UFOs that look like they're dogfighting in space. But the real issue is, as I put, right, I tweeted back, he says almost. He's comparing their movements to dogfighting, not suggesting they're dogfighting. I could be wrong, but it's a huge distinction from the implication uh, you're saying. Ryan should expand upon that. So, yeah, I mean, that's basically my point, right? I'm not saying that's not what he's saying, but it's a little confusing uh, to what he's saying, right, about that. I can't really tell uh, if he... Right, is he, compare is he actually saying they're dogfighting? They're, they're battle ready in combat, shooting stuff at each other, right? Moving or their movements are locked dog, dog fighting. So in your mind, you can sort of picture what the movements look like, right? And that's a huge distinction because one is there's battles going up in space, literal Star Wars. And the other is just comparing it to the movements, like saying my friend moves like a freight train, not saying he's a freight train, saying he moves like one, right? So the comparison like that, right? It's a huge distinction. Um, so it'd be great if uh, Ryan Graves could uh, expand upon that. Real quick note about Ryan Graves. I am a huge fan of this guy. I don't know about you guys. Tell me in the comments and tell me what you think about this, um, you know, conversation. Am I reading it wrong? What do you think he's saying? I think it's kind of confusing. I don't think you can tell really. To be honest, he does say almost like they're dogfighting, right? So that leads me to believe it's just comparing the movements. But anyway, tell me what you think. But real quick on Ryan Graves. Again, you can find him at Uncertain Vector on Twitter. Uh, huge fan of this guy. Professional, courteous, just the facts, right? Um, you know, all dragnet, this guy. And I uh, yeah, shout out to that show. Big fan of, uh, that's an old show, by the way. <laughs> anyway, big fan of this guy. Um, just how he is. Again, no matter where you stand on the spectrum of believing and skepticism, non-believing, um, he this these are the kind of people we need in this movement, man, because he's just professional, releasing stories that we're about to get into, right? Doing interviews, staying professional, testifying under oath. Uh, he's got a great podcast that moves the conversation forward. He stays out of the drama, and I appreciate that. So, yeah, big fan of Ryan Graves. Let me know what you think of him uh, in the comments. But let's jump to this um, particular video that I'm talking about with um, with Ryan Graves. So let's get rid of that. Again, Ryan Graves, uncertain vector. Look at that. He just puts looking up. That's what I'm talking about. 
Um, yeah, huge fan of this guy. And for those of you who don't know who he is, he's one of the pilots that testified under oath at the UFO hearing. Um, he had his own experiences with UAP when he flew um, in the military. So, again, he's saying that pilots are reaching out and giving him stories, and he's going to relay those stories. All right. So here we go. This is the first one. All right. So let's jump in. Um, edited info for privacy. OK, so anything in these these marks like this, he's taking out so that it doesn't sort of give away who it is. Um, and I think you'll get the point um, as we move forward, uh, as well as the audio has been removed from the video for the same reason for privacy that may give away who or what it is. Right. All right. Let's jump in. So this is a quote, right? This is a story from an actual pilot. This isn't Ryan Graves' story, by the way. Don't get confused by it. There's the quotes. Okay, let's jump in. Uh, make sure you can see that. Okay. Yes, you can. All right, let's jump in. I am a major U.S. carrier, A320-321 captain. The following sighting occurred during one of my flights recently. So this is probably like, a, right, American Airlines, Delta, right, one of these big carriers making these regular flights across the Atlantic um, and Pacific. So heading towards Asia, right? Or heading towards Europe, right? Somewhere over there. Long flights. You ever been on one? They're really long. You're over the ocean. A lot of time out there. Uh, it'd be interesting if any uh, passengers from some of these flights could release corroborating video or, or stories or experiences. That'd be interesting. Anyway, let's jump in. Um, since I have shared my story, several other major U.S. carrier pilots have reached out to me and shared their similar experiences, including sharing their video recordings of these objects from the flight levels, all seen at the base of the Big Dipper. That's probably a fact we should note if they're all coming from the Big Dipper. Uh, yeah, let's let's put a pin in that. All right. Last week of July. So not to give specific dates so that you may not be able to track that particular flight. Right. 2023, I departed Santiago, Santo Domingo uh, DR, Dominican Republic, at 2305, destined for New York JFK. My route of flight was L453 in New York Oceanic Airspace, non radar, hundreds of miles offshore. At approximately one hour into the flight, as we were approaching the southern boundary of the New York Oceanic Airspace and at 32,000 feet, I called out a visual on traffic that was excessively bright and looked like about 80 miles range and then disappeared visually. I never saw the traffic on TCAS. I'm not sure what that is. Um, I think it's some sort of. Uh, Okay, let's let's just look that up real quick. Uh, traffic collision avoidance system. Ah, got it. Okay, that makes sense. All right, that totally makes sense. All right. Then a few minutes later, I saw two objects round in shape. Two objects, okay? One lighted and one not. Flying in a formation just above the horizon. At a range, I guessed, of 120 to 200 NM. Um... The objects would illuminate to be as bright as a star for several seconds, then go dark for a few minutes, only to illuminate again. The objects would illuminate to be as bright as a star for several seconds, and then go dark for a few minutes, only to illuminate again. The brightness would vary from bright to very bright to dark. The color of the lighted object was white light. There was a second object you can clearly see in the photos that would follow the illuminated object, but it would not illuminate itself. Except for the 310 to 330 second point of my video, I think you can see the second object illuminate. This went on for the remaining two to two and a half hours of my flight to New York on L453 in oceanic airspace. After, wow. After reviewing, so for two to two and a half hours, he's seeing, right, these objects, these two objects, one illuminated, one not. The other one did illuminate for, he's saying, about 20 seconds. Um, wow. After reviewing the photos, I think the objects might have been a bit further away, but distance is very difficult to gauge at night. I have the brand new Samsung S23 phone, which has the best camera on the market for a cell phone, and I started recording this object in video. All right? Isn't this what we ask people to do? Pull out your phone and start filming. So that's what he did. We can't complain. This is literally what Neil deGrasse Tyson says to do, right? Uh, okay. 
I have a great seven minute video of it appearing and disappearing while I was talking to other airliners on 123.45 VHF about it. I'm assuming that's sort of some sort of, you know, channel, right, that they're on. Uh, and I guess they're discussing it. I don't know. That's interesting. You can hear that conversation in the video. Um, that conversation might be taken out of the video. We'll, we'll take a look. Another airliner, approximately 400 uh, nautical miles ahead of us at 36,000 feet stated they saw the same thing. Wow. Okay. I also took about 30 photos of these objects in night mode on the phone and they came out really good. And one of them, you can actually see the lighted object and the unlit object very clearly as round metallic objects. Oh, Jesus. All of the photos were taken with some sort of long exposure setting to be able to get as much light as possible to the sensor. You will be able to see in the long exposure photos, the stars are pins of light, but the UFOs are streaks of light because they are moving. It's actually amazing. All of this happened over a two and a half hour flight and continued for the entirety of our flight. The light seemed to be on or just above the horizon until we got closer to our destination of New York. Just prior to beginning our descent, so just prior to them you know, heading down, the objects appeared much higher in the sky, 80 to 90 degrees above the horizon and much farther away, actually out of the atmosphere. Wow. So, first of all, tell me in the comments what you think. Second of all, let's fucking watch this video, y'all. All right, audio on again, um, somewhere. Okay, folks, audio was removed for privacy reasons. See, that's what that's what I thought. Um, here's some photos. You know what? Let's look at the photos first. Um, wait, what? He's saying that right there? What's all this? I don't understand. It looks the same. Um, okay, maybe we get a better. Just these are crazy photos, right? Like, what is that? I mean, what is this? This is okay. I don't know. This this is is anyone else like blown away by this? I am I am I going crazy here? Am I just not excited by this? Okay, this one's a lot different. He said you can clearly tell they're metallic. Is it this one he's talking about? Is this one object? Is something coming off? I mean, dude, that does look strange. Whatever that is, uh, that does look strange. I don't know about here. This, I just, I can't see anything. Right, I'm trying to get in closer there, y'all. I don't, I just don't see anything there. I don't know what that is. This is interesting. Look like little seahorses in the sky. And granted, this is has this shape like this, right? That these don't have. So that is interesting. And this, clearly, like none of the other lights in here, this kind of looks like it's coming down this looks like it's moved this way right now there's like a little dot right here but i can't tell if that's my computer or, i mean it's the slightest it's nothing i mean it's like man you can barely see that i don't know um okay that's on my computer never mind this i don't know not sure is this i think this is a close-up from this Maybe. I honestly cannot tell. Um, I don't know. What do y'all think? Tell me. All right, let's take a look at the video. Um, so go to Ryan Graves, Uncertain Vector, and you can see all these photos and videos uh, for yourself on Twitter. All right? And uh, if you feel like it, go to. you can follow us on Twitter too, Vetted Podcast, whatever. All right, let's jump in here. Video. Okay, there it is.
There's a lot of artifacts. It'd be nice to get the original video of this, wouldn't it? Sorry. I was trying to get it bigger, but... Huh. Well, that is interesting. Can't tell if it's moving because of the camera, you know? Or is it just kind of looks like a laser pointer a little. But again, that could be the artifacting. You see all the artifacting from this? See all that? It's really hard to see anything, man. What do y'all think? Tell me in the comments, please. Is this interesting? Is it not? I mean, his story is interesting. For sure. Oh, wow. Okay. So, he's inside the plane. See that little red thing? That was interesting. You see that? Hmm. Is that what he's seeing in the, like a reflection through the glass? No, because he's seeing it when he doesn't point the camera, right? So that doesn't that doesn't make sense. I mean, I don't see anything here, y'all. Is it, it that, that's it way back there? Oh, oh shit! Oh shit! Is he zooming in? It kind of looks like he's zooming in and out. You see the way that was? And then it goes black there. These are cuts. There's cuts in here. It's cuts in the video. So I think he just spliced together the best bits. You can tell when it goes completely black, it's a cut. I edit. I mean, that, that's a cut for sure. I'm not saying anything to fairy, so I'm just saying it looks like he just put, you know, he probably filmed a lot. It's two and a half hours, right? He probably filmed a lot and just pieced all the best pieces together. I don't think it's a seven minute continuous observation of the object. So that is a distinction, y'all. So far, I think I've seen two cuts, three cuts. Yep, there's another one right there. Just cut. So this is the start of a new video. I mean, it, that's interesting, but, oh, that, whoa, okay, 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 right there, it, it, it that did look like round and, and metallic, didn't it, <laughs> right there, that, that did, that was interesting, hmm, dude, getting the original of this would be great, because you're probably still going to have some, some of this, but not as much. Here's another cut right there. It's interesting, the black, because here's why that's interesting. Because you, if it was like just pieced together, if you just took all the videos, right, you just put them back to back, 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 you would see a jump in the fragmentation of this stuff, right? All of this... Um, Right. You see all these squares and all of this, right? The way it's processing it and, and compounding it. Um, you would see that change real quick. You know, the pattern of that change from the cut. The all black is like interesting because that's space between each clip. So if he put this in an editor, he left space in between each one, like a second. Not very much. But that's interesting because that's. Not something you typically do. You know, They so all the clips sort of come together. Unless he's got a professional editing suite. Because if you're using something like iMovie or your phone or whatever, that stuff all just boom, 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 goes together. But if you have a more professional software, you can undo that and, you know, freely move your clips any way you want and create any spaces in between all black like that, that dark black. But that dark black you see... 
See that right there? See how that's dark black? That's a cut. That's not the footage, right? That's not the night sky. See how then it gets bright right there. But it's a weird, it's weird that it's like that. Almost like a fade out too. Could have done a fade out. Could be that. Could be fading out each clip in iMovie at the end. And so it goes black for a second like that. But there's no fade. So that's why I don't think that's happening. See how it just goes black? Boop. Boop. If I get if I had this by frame, I could do it frame by frame and show you. Um, that's interesting. I'm not saying anything bad. I'm just saying clip these together. So it's again, it's not a seven minute and a half minute continuous observation of this object. I just think that's important to to note. But look, there's something interesting about it for sure. Definitely a couple points um, that are quite fascinating about it. So anyway, again, uncertain vector. Ryan Graves. I'll put a link in the description for you. Go straight to this video and uh, check it out. Check out the photos. Tell me in the comments. I'm sure everyone's going to be picking this apart. Um, I do agree that the story is quite fascinating. We need more of this. More videos, more photos, more stories. Bring it. Bring it. These are the kind of things we need uh, to look into right here. So um, all the best to Ryan Graves and what he's doing again. Big fan. So tell me again what you think of the comments. And... Um, We'll see you guys in the next video. Peace, Patrick from Vetted.